So I'm late guys. Five minutes discussing. Um, I've been having problems with my uh, my Outlook Express this morning, and um, couldn't find the link to get back in um, to the uh, the webinar. Anyway, we're here now. So thanks for waiting. Um, I know we're down to talk about DAX and gold. Uh, we we will um, cover obviously those um, those products, but I think as well. Um, it's a good idea just to throw, throw it open a little bit afterwards um, and see what you guys want to talk about or if you have any questions or um, it's, all, it's all well and good guys coming on here and talking about you know trades that have happened hindsight what you should have done uh, etc it's very hard as, uh, as we all know to actually catch the trade as they're unfolding. Um, I did a seminar for Sector Bank on Monday, uh, Tuesday, sorry, um, which was quite well received and, and a lot of that seminar was basically talking about all different products, uh, all different oscillators, um, RSI, DMI, which you've got on here, MACD, uh, Ishimoko, Cloud, moving averages, etc., etc. Um, and about basically which ones work the best, um, or really what they should uh, what what they should all be used for. Um, the combination that I use seems to put me in um, more winning trades than losing trades than normally does anyway. Um, and I also use Elliott Wave or Fib uh, projections to try and um, try and decipher where we're going to go next. Uh, the settings that we've got on this chart, so this is this first one I've clicked up, it probably looks a bit messy for you guys, let's clear it up a little bit, these trend channels. Um, okay, the settings that I've got on here are three moving averages, I've got a 248 EMA, a 15 EMA, and a 62 EMA. Obviously, the, 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 the longer the, the, uh, the EMA, the less it reacts. Obviously, to market movement. The reason why I use these three, can everybody still see? Uh, the reason why I use these three um, different uh, moving average or exponential moving averages is because they basically mirror each other in different time frames. Okay, if I'm looking to a four hour chart and then flick it down to the one hour chart, the 62 EMA will virtually be mirrored by the 15 EMA in that, uh, in that time frame and, and, and vice versa. Okay, so. What I look to, I look to, to weekly charts, daily charts, um, four hourly, hourly charts, and then sometimes all the way down into 15 minute charts, uh, to try and get entry and exit levels. And obviously these EMAs reflect down nicely off all those time frames. Okay, the RSI we've got on is a market setting of 14. Uh, directional movement indicator, uh, is a 14. And the MACD is 12, 26, and 9, which is the normal market setting. Um, the RSI, as you know, the trouble with most analysis, okay, is that most analysis or most oscillators, indicators, moving averages, etc., that we have on charts are a history lesson. Okay, they all lag the market. What we really want to be looking for are indicators, forward indicators, okay, indicators that give us an indication of where we're going to go, not where we've been, or where we're going to see support and resistance. Support and resistance obviously being one of the major uh, aspects of, uh, of FX trading as far as I'm concerned. So the RSI, the RSI is there not just for overbought, oversold, which I have a tendency to not ignore, but as we all know, just to the market's uh, Oversold it doesn't mean that it's not going to keep on going down. Uh, the mark, when we talk about the mark indicators, he's actually got an indicator that, uh, is, re is it's very similar to the RSI. Basically, when that does go oversold, it's in this, it's in the sell zone as far as he's concerned. Um, so I have a 50 line, a horizontal 50 line on all my time frames. Uh, I have problems with my chart package yet, yesterday, so I haven't actually got all plotted on at the moment, but it's uh, we've got a 50 line. Basically, if it's if it's above 
the 50 line and I'm looking at the market being bullish. If it's below the 50 line, I'm looking at the market being bearish. I'm not just looking at that as an out and out indication of where I'm going to go. Um, I'm looking at the cloud uh, for resistance. Obviously, the thicker the cloud, the deeper the resistance. While she trades inside the cloud, okay, um, as far as Ishimoto is concerned, it's non trending. I'm then looking to my moving averages, okay, to keep me in a trend. Okay, I'll see the trend here being to the downside. In the 62 EMA holding this pair, well, not this pair, this uh, the gold uh, quite well, okay. Obviously, she's then trading underneath the 15 EMA as well. So I know that the downside uh, is prevailing. If I'm, especially if I'm outside of the cloud. So I'm looking for lows or, or trading below 50. I'm looking for trading below the cloud, trading below the 62 EMA, and obviously this long 248 EMA keeping the, uh, keeping the trend to the downside. Obviously the hard part of, um, of trading is trying to know when the trend is going to change because obviously we're not going to break the cloud for a long time. We're not going to break the 62 EMA for a long time. We're not going to break the 15 EMA. We're not going to break the, um, the 50 on the RSI. Okay. And so that's, this is, this is obviously a difficult period is trying to pick the bottom as, uh, as we all know. Um, so for that, I do use SIB levels. I do use, uh, the MACD. I use the MACD purely, uh, to show me divergence, nothing else. Um, this DMI might look a bit crazy. A lot, of, a lot of chart packages have only got this sequence that's on the top. The reason I like it on this chart package is because it's got the bars, and the bars are obviously showing me strength. Okay, quite simplistic to use when you when you put the bars on. Obviously, like a bit like MACD histogram, um, but the bars are red. The bias is to the downside. Okay, the bias. You notice I say the bias is to the downside. Um, sometimes you will get purely red all the way along and you just get a huge great down move. Uh, it obviously doesn't happen very often because we, as we know the market's moving in sequences. So those are my settings, okay? Um, and then I'm basically looking to Elliott Wave or, or in particular not not just Elliott Wave but SID levels. Okay, and I'm looking for price action uh, around those SID levels. The most important part I believe of um, of trading um, is price action. The price action around support, around resistance, around fib levels, around trend lines um, is the most important part of trading because that is price action at that point. Okay, um, all the rest, moving averages, etc. Um, they are showing you the average price of where the price has been, not where the price is at that point. Uh, so everything has its place, but uh, the most important thing is to try and forward project, obviously, where, where, where these, uh, these currency pairs or these indices, etc., are going to go. Um, and for that, we need price action. For that, we need SIB levels. For that, we need previous support and resistance. Uh, or price zones, PPZs, as some people call them. Um, these areas where it's where, where the market is stuck, okay. But the areas where we've had support is broken through. It's now resistant. Okay, we should all know these these uh, these areas of, um, of of high trading or consolidation. Okay. The so gold. Let's just get onto the gold. I break down time frames. Um, it's the easiest way, I believe, of, of trying to find out or, or to try and make sure that you're not trading against the trend too much. Um, breaking down from weekly into dailies, into four hourly, into hourly, etc., which we talked about before, uh, I find to be uh, the easiest way to decide where the market's going to go. Um, and of course, it's, it's, it, you, can, you can visually see where the market has been. Very hard to pick this move from here okay because she hasn't made a new low okay at this point she did make a lower high okay came down 
held the cloud quite well pushed back up okay let's just break it down this and the, and the reason why, why I have these settings as well on the chart is not just um, not just for FA it's, it's for indices for work on commodities um, I don't curve fit I mean I know, know a lot of people that will curve fit the market in other words they'll look at, uh, at euro dollar and they'll put a moving average on the euro dollar that works for that particular currency pair they'll then go to cable or euro yen or or whatever and they'll, they'll, they'll curve fit the moving averages but if you have a tendency to do that just because it worked previously it doesn't mean it's going to work in the future so you need something that that, uh, that has a a decent track record if you like okay so here off the top of gold Okay, divergence, which again we said it's the only reason why I'm looking to MACD. Okay, I've got a, a hammer top here, which uh, would I sell it off the back of that? No. Um, I like it, I like to see it, and it's at a high. Okay, so this, where you really want to be seeing signals. Okay, and near highs and lows. In the middle, you are you either want to be seeing, well, you really want to be seeing continuation patterns. Okay, at the tops, and bottoms, we want to be seeing reversal patterns. So here, this candle on the 21st of June, this weekly candle, the hammer top, the markets moved lower and, uh, and pushed back up. And if you haven't put a Dow chart on lately, you know how strong uh, hammer top formations can be because there was obviously one on the down and you know what's happened now. Um, you've got a hammer top, okay. Obviously a candle in the opposite direction is a pin bar or, or a doji, low body doji, spinning top, etc etc etc. They all do the same thing. It, it, it would be nicer to see a doji there than a hammer top. Because uh, as far as I'm concerned dojis have got um, have got um, more power behind them because it's showing price rejection okay, um, to the upside. So I would prefer to see uh, a spike to the upside with, a, with a, a low closing body at least in the bottom third of the candle. Obviously I'd prefer, um, I'd prefer, to, I'd prefer to, for the body to be red and green so at least I know I'm closing below where I opened. Okay, i.e. here, uh, you know, that's a great, great pin bar or doji or whatever you want to call it. Of course, you have to, on that, you have to wait for, this, for, the, for a close below the middle of the previous relevant candle, which was here. Okay, stop above the high. Um, you would eventually have got stopped out if you'd run it that long. But anyway, getting back to here. So I have a top. Okay, we've obviously got a very... Uh, bearish candle there down to my support my first support level where we did bounce around for a little while and then we come up so we're breaking it down from the time frame so this is this is what i'm first uh, first looking at this uh this hammer here and then onto my uh onto my daily chart okay um obviously on some of the chart packages you've got to be careful for these guys this is a sunday um Sunday candle, which, um, as far as I'm concerned, is pretty, pretty irrelevant. Um, in fact, could just take them out. Um, so, this was the move down that formed the hammer. Okay, now this candle here. The extremely relevant candle. It's an engulfing red. Okay. An engulfing red candle under a previous high. Okay. After a correction up, after, after some, some, uh, some dojis. But that, as far as I'm concerned, is price action. Okay. It engulfs this previous this previous candle. We can see down to the oscillators, okay, that we're making uh divergence. 
and then the market pushes lower. Obviously, this candle here is fantastic. Again, it holds this 15 EMA. It holds it when it breaks it, it breaks it impulsively. Four hours. So at that point there, after down the top, okay, I'm looking for bearish, uh, a bearish, um, signal. Or I'm looking, I'm looking to get short after, uh, after these candles. Okay. Four hours. Let's just go for the time frames just so you can tell which candle represents what. Okay. Um, sorry, two there. So here, the 27th of, 28th of June, okay. Scroll back. Okay, 28th of June. So that is that day's movement, okay. Which, which, which basically means that I want, I want to get short after, uh, after that day. Lower high, okay. Bearish engulfing red candle that formed using these, obviously, four hour candles, okay. The market then moves up. Notice where we're trading, okay. We're virtually trading sideways. I'm not in a trend because I'm inside or I'm out, so my, my moving average is my 62 and my 15 have virtually gone flat, okay? I'm looking down to these guys down here. Am oh, I still showing some divergence? Yes, I am. Okay, MACD is crossed and going in that direction. Direction mark, uh, movement indicator is confirming that the trend is to the downside now. And here, I'm below 50. So, numerous reasons, lower, lower highs, okay? Engulfing uh, red, a hammer top on a weekly, below 50, DMI, this puppy showing divergence off uh, from previously, okay, and here I get an engulfing red candle, okay, bang in the middle of this, uh, of this trend. That is signal enough to get short, okay. You can sometimes wait for a pullback, it doesn't always happen. The stop is below the signal, uh, above or below, depending if it's a bullish or bearish signal, above that signal candle. You then want to be looking at your risk reward, okay? So say you ended up putting your trade on there, 1238, uh, 1247. So you've got, um, $20 worth of, um, $20. Ten dollars worth of, uh, of risk. You want to be taking half of your trade off when you've repaid that uh, when you've repaid that risk, stop to entry, and then bleeding the rest. And the rest is really history. And at that point here, okay, when we get this break, when we get the break to the downside through these supports, we know where support is. This is support. Okay, it spikes it here, here, here. Look back. Over, over different time frames, you can see that this is a price zone. I apologise about the noise, it's just started uh, hammering down with rain. And I have an office at the back of the garden. Um, so the roof's a bit like a, like a caravan roof, unfortunately. So it can get a bit, uh, it can be a bit noisy in a storm. Um, so anyway, at this point, we then place our fibs on, okay? We're looking for fib levels to at least um, get us down to this sort of level, 161.8, okay? You then want to be looking to obviously this sequence from here to here, and back to your daily chart, okay? 161.8, the move down is impulsive, Okay, around here we're on the 1st of July. Okay, so this 1st of July, would you want to, would you want to buy into that candle? No, you wouldn't. Okay. And you can also go back, because you've now got a, uh, 
excuse me. You're just now starting a new month, okay? You can go back and start looking at the monthly chart. Jeez. It's lovely in England, isn't it? Hailstone. This is supposed to be the summer holiday. Now I've got to open the window because the rain is now coming in. I'm going to wait a second, guys. I'm going to Spain on Friday. Woohoo! And if the weather follows me, I will be rather upset. Here we go. I'm in Sheffield, please. Um, my two boys are on an out outdoor sports camp today, so they'll be having fun. Anyway, let's go back to this chart because it might not it, it might not uh, it might not finish. Um, so you know that that was the end of your month on that four hour here. So then you want to be looking back to your monthly chart. And your weekly chart. And that is obviously a bearish, um, very bearish candle. Okay, where does the week of candle stop or where does it pause? It pauses at the 15 EMA, which is at 1200. We've also got a big figure, obviously. You've got 1200. You've got 15 EMA on the weekly chart, down to your four hourly chart. What have we got? We've got big figure, okay? We've got 161.8 cents at 199.4. We know there's going to be some support around here. Now, we're heavily oversold, but as we know, we can keep on going oversold. We've got no diverse, okay? Market. Move slightly higher. Day pushes back down. But this is, as far as any other wave is concerned, this is the fourth wave. Okay? Bit of a choppy uh, fourth wave. You only start to get some divergence. My God. Do you hear that, Don? <laughs> you only start to get some divergence. I've never given a webinar in these uh, conditions before. You only get divergence off this low here, okay? Again, going back to price action, two pins to bottom, uh, a decent green candle that closes um, above the red bar, okay? Market chops around here. While she's in this uh, cloud, and as far as Nishimoto is concerned, she's non-trending. But we know that the trend is still to the downside. She hasn't made higher highs. Okay, still making higher lows, big level. We haven't breached the top of wave one. Okay, this is actually the top of wave four, not here. Okay, bottom of wave one is 122, uh, 1224. It actually makes it back to 121.18. So I'm still looking for shorts. Or well, my wave, my weekly candles, my daily candles. Telling me that I should still be looking for short positions. Okay, you're not going to get a trade. <laughs> I think the heavens have opened up. Um, you're not going to get a trade every day using um, weekly signals, daily signals, um, four hourly signals, and it is a game of patience. Okay, and that's why I have 24 charts on um, on all day because I'm looking for, I'm looking for prime opportunities. Um, I talked to some people and they'll turn to me and go, I think it's finished now. I talked to some people and I say, you know, what do you trade? 
and I think, like, thinking that they're going to say, well, I trade currencies or I trade commodities or I trade the industry. They'll say, oh, I trade cable. And I think if you're just that blinkered, if you're just trading one currency pair, then you're missing out on potential decent opportunities for, for, from an array of other currencies, an array of other commodities. All right, I don't, you know, I look at oil, I look at gold, I look at the DAX, I look at the Dow, uh, I look at the FTSE, and all the rest of the currencies. So I'm not, you know, I'm not, um, I'm not looking at um, grains and, and, and stuff like that. But uh, there are opportunities everywhere, and the, the and the bigger that, or the or the bigger the the time frame on the candle, the more relevance she will have. Um, but when you get down into your hourly chart, when you get down into your into your um, 15 minute or your 5 minute chart, or some of you guys might trade off 1 minute chart. I'm not saying there's anything wrong, wrong with it, if you've got a technique that will make you con consistent money, then go for it. Um, but I've tr I, I tried, uh, tried long and hard to, to try and trade off very, very short time frames, and I think, it's, uh, I think you're better off putting on a wide stop, smaller amount, bigger targets basically. And uh, plus, it also means that okay, I've got a full-time job, or you can't get in 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 front of the screen all the time. Then you still got a chance to be able to make money out of these markets. They're here, okay, in the middle of this um, big cloud. Notice the moving averages are still in order, okay, only just, but you still got um, 62 over 15, so they're still they're still in order. And you get this very large engulfing candle, uh, it's very large engulfing red, okay, and then she moves to the downside. Again, around here you get an engulfing uh, green, which should probably take you out of the market, but it's, ta it's taking you out, okay, it's telling you to cash in, but it's not telling you to cash in and go long, okay, we're still underneath the cloud, we're still underneath the 15, we haven't made 261.8%, which is down here, okay, market then moves up, Choppy sequence. Impulsive, corrective. Gets up to here, spikes through the cloud, spikes through the 62 EMA, engulfing red candle. Okay, on the, on the four hour chart. And then what happens? Down she comes. You get another engulfing red here. You know, if you miss the opportunities, as long as you know where the trend is, you're still getting chances to get in. Okay? Down to 61.8. And this is the hard part. Because obviously now, you're trading into the correction. Okay? You're trading into the cloud. You're trading uh, into the moving averages. Okay? You're trading into noise. While she's dropping, okay, obviously your target areas around here, or fibs, okay, previous highs, previous lows. But, but if you're falling out of the sky, if there's nothing left, there's nothing there to hold you apart from these guys, then you've got a pretty decent fall down. When you're moving straight back up, you've got all of this that you're tackling with, okay? All of this previous uh, price action. If it moves back up, um, and at this point, we know that we've had a wave completed. We also know that we've had a wave completed off the top, okay? Because this was the high. You got five down. That if, no, no, I'm saying if. At the moment, we're not sure. But if this is one, okay, then this has got to be two, and we know that two is going to stop or should retrace between. Um, 50 and 61.8 percent. So I don't like trading uh, retracements. Okay, but if you notice here, you also got if you break it down into a short time frame, you've got the one hour again. Pull it back a bit. Divergence off the low. Okay, lower low, higher low, higher low, higher low. Okay, and she moves up. 
you really want to be in this? It's not very good, is it? Um, you know, you know that you're going to get a decent pullback, um, but the action's not great, not until you get out of the cloud and then start pushing higher. But here again, if you want to trade off price action, okay, down to the low, divergence, and what do we get on the, on the one hour candle? Again, we get a large engulfing green. Where does it stop? Okay, or pause. The pause is around the, the, the 15 EMA. This holds the price. But when you get this engulfed, the, the, the power of, of the price is going to eventually take out these 15, these EMAs won't hold forever. Okay. So she moves up, breaks out, decent. Again, when we were talking about price action, okay, engulfing green candle doesn't even, it doesn't just take out the body, it takes out everything, okay, makes it even more powerful. It's a very good question. And I was teaching on Monday and Tuesday, and I had signals on numerous pairs, um, of the yen, euro yen, Euro dollar, Aussie dollar, to get short. Um, even in the seminar, we, we turned around and we had some live charts on and I was saying, um, basically you want to be getting short because the dollar index is 61.8%. Um, I can see Aussie dollar in a wedge formation. I can see cable, a uh, big figure, uh, and at 61.8% of the last move down. Um, which is actually 159.75, so 20, 25 ticks different with, with the big figure. Um, I can see uh, Euro Dollar uh, completing the fifth wave. Um, remember, five waves down in any way, that wave up in, in A is five waves. Okay, the wave down that we're in now is three waves A, B, C. Um, so, uh, would I do I do I react to mistrade opportunities? I haven't. I haven't yesterday, I haven't today. Um, because the way that I trade and I know where my price zone wants to be and if and if I react too late then my risk reward goes out the window. And the trouble is with um if you don't if you're not strict with yourself with your with your money management um, and you put too much risk on the table for too little reward, then if you do get one wrong um, you're going to pay the price for it basically. And as we all know, when you get such impulsive moves down, okay, look at the daily, the daily chart on, uh, on Euro, Dollar and Cable, etc. They're very, very bearish candles. Um, but we also know that we, we, that we can get corrections inside these bear runs when they, when, when they, uh, when they show themselves. So it's very hard to just turn around and say, right, yeah, it's going to continue and you just, bang on a trade and go, I'm going to put 200 points stop loss on. If your target's only 100 pips, then uh, then I'll prefer to leave it alone and look for the next one, really. Um, so here, we've got price action here. Okay. Any reversal candles? No, no, no. Okay. Pin to bottoms, which also like with a close above. It also closes above the 62 EMA. Okay. Another bullish uh, signal, okay, and then she starts to move up, okay. Um, notice the spike through the through the top of the uh, of the cloud, a false uh, false signal. They call them Pinocchio's noses as well. It's the, it's the market line to tries to break out. When it looked at the, when it when it was at the top of there, she would look fantastic. As soon as she comes down the bottom, she looks horrendous, and that is why you have to let. Candles close if you look, if you're trading off one hour, if you're trading off four hour candles. Because these candles can reverse the, the, themselves, and they can reverse themselves in the last five minutes as well. And one thing you should also no, take note of, is sometimes if you go onto forums or you go onto different um, chat rooms and you're talking about different trend setups, and if one guy might turn around and go, oh, yeah, I've got a fantastic pin bar on a, on a four hour chart. And another guy will say, well, I haven't. I've just got a... I've got a red, a green followed by a red. And that's because they're trading off different time zones. So just because you see, see something doesn't mean that somebody that's trading in Florida or, or Hong Kong or wherever is going to see, see the same, uh, 
the same opportunity because of the different time zone and the different his clothes will not be the same as your clothes. Um, so anyway, then we obviously move back. Now it's had a 62 now holds. So we broke through, so that notice how it holds the sport. Obviously, the more what you want, what you want to be looking for as well is what I call confluence. So you want the moving averages. If they're tight together, then you know there's solid support there. If you've then got a cloud support, okay, you know there's solid support there. Um, if you've then got a fib level, you know, you add all these things up. The more you can get into your toolbox, the more reasons that, that traders will be looking at. Because you'll have a guy that's trading off the clouds, you'll have a guy that's trading off off, off a fib, you'll have another guy that's trading off something else, you'll have somebody else that's looking at the 50 uh, RSI. Now you'll have another guy that's looking at this and looking at this. So when so when that moves lower, and you get that 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 spike there, and you you're at the 62. Okay, you're at the 15, you're above 50, DMI is showing you positive, MACD's bullish, okay? You've got ample opportunity to get to, to get a long in here, okay, when she breaks. You want to want to wait for a third to break and close above, you know, get get a long in here. Okay, your stops below this 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 last swing. Swing high, uh, swing low. Then moves up. Okay, doesn't particularly light. The 248 comes back down. Again, 62 EMA. What do we have here? We have an engulfing green candle. Okay, takes it higher again. What do we have here? An engulfing green candle. The two pins are bottom. Everything is positive. Everything. Okay, all the count back there. One little small red. You have to give everything a little bit of a pinch of salt. Again, so it's, it's, it's spiking through the 248. And this is price action, okay? There are no reversal signals yet. There are no, we're not trading underneath, okay? This is, this is like a dead zone in here, okay? Cloud is holding it pretty well, okay? Here, okay, is that 4th of August at uh, 2 o'clock? Okay. Different time zones again. The two hour. When you when you see that on an hourly chart, okay, you see a red candle that takes out the green candle. That is a double high low close. Okay, it's a potential reversal pattern. You've got to know these patterns. Okay, have I at state? Have I at Well, I've got a, I've got a previous high here, okay, what the FIB level is telling me. Um, I'm up to 38.2%, or around about 38.27% on my, um, on my four hour chart. So am I going to expect some, some, some uh, well, is there a possibility of a reaction here? Of course there is. We've got this. We've got 38.2, okay, and this candle here is a double high low close. Now a double high low close, if you take it to a two hour chart, and this is what I'm saying everybody sees different things, okay, if you take it to a two hour chart, there she is, okay, she's no longer a double high low close, she suddenly becomes a pin, a, a, a doji, okay. Followed by another doji, and down, you know, and we get this move, this correction lower. Very hard to follow everything in all different currencies and in all different um, different pairs. Okay, so then she comes lower. I don't see that's an engulfing red, no green. No, she's not an engulfing green. But you know, am I selling that? No, I'm not selling that. But I'm looking to get out of a long trade. I'm still in it. When I see that, uh, when I when I see that, I'm there, I'm still looking for long opportunities, okay? Because I know that the trend is the trend is not confirmed that she's coming lower yet. Is that a long signal? No, not really, not really. I've missed this, okay? But have I really missed anything? 
not that I can see. This just looks like one big flag formation, as far as I'm concerned. Or it might be trying to make a top here. And then I'm going down to my four hour chart. Okay. I'm constantly flicking through time frames, looking at different um, formations of different candles and, and, and things are making. Look look where this held. Okay. 62, 62, above the cloud. These were these were actually written on before. I was I was thinking that this might be A A B, but it did, this was quite short. All I know is is that when it gets up to this level, this price action, okay, between 50 and 61.8 percent, I'm going to start looking for for for, for opportunities to get short again. Um, but here, I'm not doing anything. I haven't got any engulfing greens. I haven't got any engulfing red. It's a nice pin to tops here. It warned of this correction. Um, but it's not. There's nothing to get excited about. Daily chart. Yuck. Because you've got that sideward movement, where there's no, you know, there's nothing to get excited about, we're getting these. Indecision bars. Are they golf? Are they engulfing? No. Nope. Um, you know, there's, there's nothing there. Just getting held by the 15 EMA and 62. Top of the cloud. Okay, thin cloud cover. This is all where the price action was before. 121.16. Wow. Okay, 122.24. This is 121.16. These previous highs. Um, it's been alright with gold. What we've talked about. Everybody understand what we're saying about price action. I'll quickly flick on the DAX. I was going to cover some currency pairs. Let's put the FTSE instead of the DAX actually. Um, you've got to keep your mind open as well. Just because you just cause you, if you see something, you've got to you've got to react to it. Okay. If you if you're in a, a, a an uptrend and you see an engulfing red candle um, or a double high, low close that's going to form a pincer bar on, the, on another time frame. You've got to, you've got to, you've got to be watching yourself. You've got to be, you've got to be tightening in your stops. You've got to be getting out of that trade. You've got to be cashing in. You've got to be packing your loss, whichever one it is. Okay. Let's quickly onto this one. Um, obviously, Armageddon. Okay, correction. I don't know if it is a correction. Okay, but. This was 161.8% overshot, divergence. Okay. Weekly bars, weekly candles, not great around here. Uh, this was the sort of first decent red that we had. But what we have got now, okay, this moves down lower. Messy charts on there. Okay. There's a fair bit to read in here. Okay, got pin bars not near the top. This was actually uh, when we go back to our bearish engulfing. Okay, so this is a bearish engulfing red. Okay, on the 16th of April. If you put a two-day chart up again. That might be a uh, a pin bar there. Okay, moves down. That was fat finger day. Doji. This is a, a morning star formation. Doji with a lower close has to close halfway but, uh, below the red candle. That's the green candle. So that takes you your lower. If you missed it, you've got an engulfing red here. Okay. Price action again moves lower. Um, signals to go long. Well, 
I wouldn't have wanted to go along against this this down downtrend. But you've got a um a decent ten bar here. And then back up into the cloud, okay, sixty two EMA. This is an engulfing red candle at the sixty two EMA at the cloud. It's it's a decent candle. That's a signal to to at least start looking for shorts. Okay. Then moves down. What does this one show us? The previous low, got to take note of it. Okay. Madness if you don't. Previous low, engulfing green candle. And she moves all the way up again. What are we going to get at the end of this week? We know we're going to get, a, a, well, I think we're going to get quite a decent, um, engulfing red on the, uh, on the weekly, okay, you can see here made a high, okay, made a low, needs to close below below there 52.95. Notice what she's pushing on at the moment. She's pushing on the 15, she's pushing on the 248, she's pushing on the top of the cloud, and she's pushing on the 62 EMA. No mean feat, okay. You'd have thought after yesterday that she'd just go and would just disappear into the, into the abyss, but so many things here to battle with um, before she can uh, before she can get through. But would I want to be buying after that candle? No, uh, I'll probably be waiting to see how that um, how that weekly finishes to, to, to look for shorts again in shorter time frames. Um, but again here between 50 and 61.8 percent. You've got to be thinking about, um, about at least getting out or if not looking for short signals around this level. And also four hour candle. A wedge formation. Okay. Again, the cloud holding it. Here our EMAs holding, holding. Here she breaks through the cloud below the 62, below the 15 and head off. I mean here I've got support for the top side, 52.95. That is going to be so relevant. Got the 15 EMA. And we know on the weekly she needs to close below that level. Okay, 52.95. So 52.95. 52.95. Hold a thought she'll target it this morning or today, not this morning. But whether or not she can uh, she can break through it. And if she does break through it, we've got these pretty decent resistance here, 62 and the cloud. Okay, again that's confluence. This isn't. Okay, she's standing alone here. Here she's not standing alone. Here she's uh we've got some confluence. Okay, it's five two. I normally get uh uh so we've got to wrap it up around this time. So um anybody got any questions? Anybody wanna quickly uh suggest another currency pair before we get to get uh Get thrown off. Yeah, it is a bearish turning point on FTSE. As long as, long as she can stay below uh, or close this week below 52.95, then she's a very bearish share. Yeah. Saying that, I think dollar yen is very close to the bottom. So, um, but as we know, that's not been tracking currency pairs, is it? Or it's not been tracking the indices, I should say. Okay, good. Again, breaking it down to time frame. Doji, engulfing red. Okay, engulfing green at the 62 EMA. Okay, resistance. The 15 EMA spikes. This is all perfect Elliott wave. One, two, three, four. Apart from the fifth wave extension, we've got two spikes here uh, on the weekly chart. Now watch this. This again is a very important 
if she can close below the 62 and engulf this um, this green candle, then the bottom of the cloud and this 15 EMA come into play, which is at 153.20. Daily chart. Again, we've just my notes, um, double bottom, I think so, I don't know so, I just trade what I see, but at the moment I see a big pin bar from yesterday, uh, 30 minutes, got a yen was actually showing, um, we'll, we'll quickly flick that up as well in a minute, okay, but here, this was this whole move down, this is 61.8%, this is a big figure. You've got to give this area some uh, some credibility, especially when she's coinciding with euro dollar, especially when she's coinciding with a wedge on on, on RD dollar, uh, especially when she spiked through and formed a very large do doji and dollar cap. Um, they're here, basically one, two, three, four. I think this is this is the fifth wave in an extension, and I think this is a. And I think that she comes down to this sort of level at least. Okay, I think around here, 154, you could make it all the way down to here, 150 the figure. But again, this is A, B, and then I think uh, I think the next wave is, is obviously after this B B wave correction. The next wave is C. The only I'm not trying to catch the bottom, but what I do know is that this. But this this B wave that we're in should be in three um, three waves, okay? There's a bit of support here, 155.60, but then a bit of support at 155 the figure. So, and then obviously we're going to get some confluence here. So yeah, at the moment the bias is still to the downside. Okay, I'll just quickly slip on dolly in. Wedge. This is the previous low. See what she's doing now. Got to wait for the next candle. Okay, just because it's a pin bar, you want the next candle to close in the middle of here. Again, 30 minutes is looking too clever either. Okay, guys. Um, I've got to wrap it up. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, Sorry about the rain. Let's see, that's, uh, that, that, that wasn't my doing. Um, enjoy yourselves and, uh, and hope to I'll speak to you all again soon. Um, I posted, just quickly, I posted something on the blog about whether or not people want to do like a one day seminar. You know, I'm going to have a word with, um, with the guys from, um, from FX Street. Uh, let's see if they want to rain something. But I do know that, you know, we don't have very many of them. And um, it'd be good as well to get one in the north of England. Okay, so if you do fancy it, just post um, post an interest on the blog.